We're going to look at a mimer of the Alter Rebbe on Parshas Baha'loischa, Baha'lotcha, and in this particular mimer, the Alter Rebbe again analyzes our right to eat and says that an Am Haaretz, someone who is ignorant of Jewish teachings. And indeed, as we will see, it means Jewish spiritual teachings. Is not eligible to eat meat. Now, put aside the whole issue of the contemporary debate as to whether we should be eating meat or not because of cruelty to animals or all sorts of other、uh, rationales that are in a contemporary world. It's very interesting. That the Alter Rebbe quotes the Talmud and says, "Someone who doesn't know what it means to consume meat should not do so." Why? And the answer is because when we eat food, we are carrying out an extremely important divine function. We are elevating the hidden sparks which fell from the world of Tohu. The primordial world, where the sefirot didn't get on, and couldn't be contained in a vessel, and it all exploded. And those sparks of extremely high divine creation spread through all the cosmos, through the whole universe, spiritual and physical. And the human being's task, as we said on a previous occasion, is to take those sparks and release them from their container. Which is the animal, which is the vegetable, even the inanimate world, and to be able to return it to its state of tohu. And we do that only with conscious eating. We can only do that if we recognise that the purpose of eating is exactly that. And if a person doesn't understand Jewish teachings of how to honour food. How to make the bracha? How to adopt the kavana? And to understand that one eats to satiety, and not necessarily simply because of the pleasure inherent with it, within it. Nothing wrong with the pleasure, but that's not the sto- whole story. Then they're ineligible to eat. In fact, he explains that the first food, according to one midrash, that Adam ate from the tree of knowledge, it was wheat. And we learn in the Gemara that until a baby eats some solid food like wheat, they can't even begin to verbalize and speak. But then there's another side of the coin. We depend on the food, so doesn't that suggest not just that we have the ability, being higher than the food, to elevate it back the sparks, but also that the food is able to elevate us, sustain us. We're dependent on it. So, on in talking from that perspective, the food is of higher order than we are. So, on the one hand, we say we are higher than the food, so we have the car- the capacity to mevarer, biru, refine the food by taking the sparks and returning them to their source. On the other hand, we say that the food itself is of an order which is higher than us, because, as we've said previously, a stone at the top of the wall falls furthest from the wall. Which means that which is spiritually higher falls down to lower, the most physical level. So therefore, that which is even physically below us, food, actually derives from a higher source, and hence it's able to sustain us. So we have both aspects of it: our capacity to refine the food, and the food's capacity to elevate and sustain us. And that's why we are upright, with the head above the mouth,、uh, uh, above the body and the limbs, because the mind is foremost. Where an animal is got the head and body aligned, because an animal doesn't have the intelligence to be able to elevate other things of the world. But on the other hand, the animal has a true instinctive survival function, which may be superior to a human being. So let's see if we can internalize some of these these teachings. In a meditative format, and be able to be more mindful and conscious when we eat. So gently close your eyes and just picture yourself approaching a table laden with 
so much good food, beautiful food, beautifully prepared food, a kiddush. And you're not going to rush to the kiddush table, but you're going to immediately adopt a kavana. I am going to elevate the food that I eat. I will respect the food that I eat. <clears throat> I'm going to make a bracha first, which is a channel that draws down spiritual energy. It becomes a channel that allows the spark within the food to become elevated. Look at your favorite food at, at, on the table. Enter into a personal relationship with it, with it, a spiritual relationship. And as you make the bracha and you approach the food and put it onto your plate and you sit down at your table, as you eat the food, recognize your duty, your obligation to free the spark which is within the food so that it returns to its source. But at the same time, have a strong and profound respect that that food is able to sustain you because you're elevating that spark through you from vegetation or animal, it becomes part of the human being. And through the human being, spiritual energy becomes the medium whereby it rises above. And as it rises above, it lifts you at the same time to a higher spiritual place with it. You are the master of the food to refine it. And the food is like the wings that will teleport you to higher levels. Always respect the food. Gently open your eyes, coming all the way back, making sure at your very next meal, you spend even a few seconds being mindful of the eating activity you're just about to undertake and what it truly means. <laughs>